Originally, I was glad about the idea of comic book films finally taking a step back in the cinema market, giving room for non-comic films to get my attention, but Joker pulled me back in. I kept hearing more and more controversy from the US side of things, which just aren't relevant in the UK, but if you tell someone to not do something, that will only make them want to do it more. Joaquin Phoenix gives a performance portraying the comic book villain Joker, the crazy clown that fights Batman. He is a source to promote pure evil and chaos, regardless of moral standard, because for him, it's all a big joke. And Joaquin made me feel sorry for a murdering lunatic. Comic book films often use an angle of science fantasy to attract the audience. Iron Man's suit, Thor's hammer, Superman's powers, and what have you. This is purely human. No outside factors or unbelievable premise that requires you to suspend your disbelief. There's no strange chemical accident, he doesn't get bitten by a radioactive crazy bug or anything that turns him into the Joker physically. He's just a man with an uncontrollable laughing condition and potentially controllable mental issues who has a really bad day. Beaten as a child but couldn't control his laughter through it all to the point where his insane adoptive mother perceived that he was a happy child. His self-defense killing before he goes too far shooting the assailant trying to escape. The entire delusion with his neighbor girlfriend. The priceless yet sick situation of a clown with dwarfism who couldn't reach the chain lock on a door to escape having to ask Joker, who just brutally killed a man in front of him, politely to open the door so he can leave. Joker keeps you locked in with pity, shock, and never letting you get a sense of comfort. Whenever you guess you have time to breathe, something is added to the situation to put you on edge, be it someone presenting themselves as a threat, or Joaquin's disturbingly skinny, continuously contorting body. All of this while at the same time supported by the film's outstanding score, a mixture of Rat Pack music and a soundtrack that not only is a perfect match for each scene, but acts as a personal escort into the deranged mind of a broken man, taught to just take hardship as it comes and accept the way things are without an iota of hope for positive change until he cracks. Imagine that as pure music. Joker shares the same composer with the HBO series Chernobyl, a series about its namesake nuclear disaster resulting in unspeakable deaths and revolting health problems, and supposedly the ultimate fall of the Soviet Union. With an associated soundtrack designed to make you feel uncomfortable, it just makes sense how someone who can accomplish that will succeed at a task as complex as this. This film keeps trying to make you feel that Joker is justified in his actions, but is persistent in reminding you that this is one of the biggest villains in comic book history. Never in a situation where the ends justify the means, he's completely unredeemable. Although in the film he's given a thought of justification and a fall from grace, in comics he wants to be evil. He hasn't been reduced to it, he hasn't asked for a reason or any other means. He is evil for laughs. In terms of personal preference, we finally see Thomas Wayne as he probably acted behind closed doors, even though it's through a negative bias where we normally see him through a positive bias of Batman who only praises his late parents. Thomas Wayne has previously hinted to be involved with the Gotham mob and is thought to be involved in doing some truly shady deals behind closed doors. We have no mention of Batman, Superman, or any other DC characters besides the Joker, the Wayne family, their butler Alfred, and the city of Gotham. Which makes the focus point of Joker being the anomaly among the chaos his actions have created, although he isn't directly involved in the creation of the new wave of crime against the wealthy in Gotham, his story of becoming an icon of crime and chaos is told. Except this time he's supported by the lower classes of Gotham, who revel in his disturbing actions. Although we've seen the Waynes die for the millionth time, it's good to see that they've put a spin on the origins of Joker. Instead of Batman inadvertently creating the Joker, similar to the Killing Joke storyline, Joker has inadvertently created Batman, similar to the 1989 film. If there are plans to create a new cinematic universe starting with Joker, clearing the slate of the current DC Cinema series, I think we have some potential here if they keep it purely Batman. 
Storyline adaptations of Year One, The Court of Owls, Nightfall, The Long Halloween, and so forth. They keep it in the Batman circulation, so we'd see characters like Robin, Batgirl, Two Face, and Poison Ivy, but not characters such as Superman, Lex Luthor, The Flash, or any other DC characters that aren't originated from the Batman brand. If I had to compare it to past Jokers, I love Joaquin's performance and attention to the role. I love serious DC, not a lot of comic cheesiness that's best suited for Marvel, in my opinion who although have proven themselves that they can handle serious drama with Infinity War and Logan, still function with the old cheesy comic humour. Jack Nicholson in the 1989 Batman movie was back and forth with me. I couldn't really determine my opinion of it, just because of how dated the film is. We don't talk about Jared Leto. Mark Hamill is a great voice for the character, but the comparison of live action acting to animation and video game performances is another conversation. So it comes down to Heath Ledger's performance as Joker in The Dark Knight. Heath gave a great performance in a case of Batman vs the Joker, but as a standalone film I don't think it could have been a solid story with his short, deep speeches. It's a different story with a different dynamic. Joker is the hero of this story, but he's the villain, period. The story has made me feel pity for Batman's arch nemesis for the first time. If this leads to Joaquin Phoenix's Joker vs any Batman moving forward, this will have a lot more weight to it because we've finally seen Joker's origins told in a believable manner that result in a conclusion that makes you question everything you've just witnessed. Did all of this actually happen or was it all the delusions of a giggling violent maniac? Uh, Murray, one small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Joaquin impressed me. He's the best Joker. Just 